You spoke to James. We know that he's been through some turbulent years. How did he seem when you spoke to him? Yeah, look, he was really um, energised, really articulate, um, really pointed in his remarks and, and really, really open. And I think it's probably... You know, the most frank and open uh, James Packer interview we've heard for a long time. What do you think are some of the things that we don't know and maybe underestimate about James Packer? Yeah, and I think underestimate is a is a very good term. You know, these larger-than-life characters, um, you know, it can be a thing where you only hear about them when they're in a, in a scandal or in a controversy or, 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 you know, someone's trying to take them down a peg or two. Um, and... It, it, you know, it's hard sometimes to get the human out of that person. Um, and this is a very human interview. He, you know, he talks about everything from the Middle East, which he obviously has a special place in his heart because he's lived in Israel before um, quite recently. And, and he talks about being a father himself. Mm. And he talked about being debt free. That was the, one of the things that I found fascinating about this story. What impact do you think that had on his mental health? Yeah, look, and again, like it's been written about a lot, his demons, his inner demons, he struggles with mental health, struggles with alcohol, struggles with painkillers. Um, and he does talk about for the first time in his life, he's debt free. And again, like it's easy to think, well, you know, you inherit um, a fortune, you take on Crown, the Crown Resorts Empire. But with that does come a lot of debt. And when there's a lot of debt, there's a lot of decision making and it hangs over every inch of your life. And he talks about having that weight off his shoulder and the extraordinary impact on his mental health and his physical health. He says he's lost a lot of weight um, since being debt-free. Mm. You talk about the weight on his shoulder, and I know you're a fan of Succession like me, and I think about James Packer, and I think about uh, you know the, the weight of the legacy of his father that has always weighed on him. What impact do you think that's had on him over the years? Yeah, look, I mean, obviously there's been so many words written about um, James, and he's, he's you know, quite... Um, He's quite uh, interesting, colourful, larger-than-life father himself in Kerry. Um, the most uh, amazing part of it to me was talking about James as being a father. I'm a father myself of a five and a two-year-old. He's a father of three teenagers. And, you know, like he spoke quite honestly about needing to spend more time with them. Um, and, you know, they're in their formative years. They're living in London with his second ex-wife, Erica. And, you know, he spoke very openly and honesty, honestly about wanting to be a better father and wanting to spend more time with the kids. Yeah, well, he's got a bit of spare change that he can uh, devote to presents for the kids. How is he spending his money these days? Yeah, really interesting. Opened up about his finances. Probably the most fascinating part of that is obviously he has he has bet big, um, excuse the pun, on AI, um, like many people have, and, and he was part of the NVIDIA success. Um, he talks about a medical AI company that he's in on, and he's obviously an investor in Meta as well. Yeah, and one thing that you tackle with him, I guess, is how things ended with Crown and what his takeaways were in terms of working in the casino industry and his business interests in China. Uh, what, what was, it, I guess, your assessment of how he thought about that? Well, it's a pretty simple assessment, to be honest, because he was really um, blunt. And he said, you know, never again in the casino industry, never again in an industry that's that heavily regulated by the government. And he also came out with really strong remarks about China, which I think, you know, China, the Chinese economy plays such a massive part in the Australian econo economy. And, you know, James has come out and said it's uninvestable. Um, and, you know, Xi Jinping has taken it back 20 years. And so for James to say that, someone who has been on the ground in China, um, at one point Crown probably was the biggest Australian company on the ground in China, for him to make those remarks will send shockwaves, I think, through the economy. Yeah, I think it's just so rare to get insights like this from someone who has operated at the absolute apex of Australian business uh, to now have that distance to look back on his time. Uh, it's just amazing. I've read the full article. It's a cracking read. Very candid interview, as you say, uh, with one of Australia's most famous and fascinating men. Uh, and everybody can read it themselves at thenightly.com.au tonight. Anthony DeSegli, Editor-in-Chief of The Nightly. Thanks for being back on the show. Thanks so much, Ben.